In this Framer tutorial, we will learn the ins and outs of components by recreating this Netflix style carousel. We'll set the foundation by covering things like states and variants, and then later in the tutorial, move over to variables and component nesting. I've got the file linked in the description if you want to follow along. Now, the first thing we'll do is to create a classic button component. I'll start by creating a text field, say, click me, I wrap it in a stack, make sure that it's set to fit content, add some padding. I go to the insert menu, search for material, drag in this material icon, decrease the size a bit, give the button some rounding. And by the way, if you find working with stacks to be hard, I have a video on the topic in the top right. Now I'll just right click, hit create component, call it button, hit enter, now this takes us to the component view. You'll find this component along with all your other components here in the assets tab in the left sidebar. You can also go back to your main canvas by hitting this breadcrumb. And as soon as you double click a component on your canvas, you go back to this view. Now let's start by creating a hover state for our button. I'll go to the box below the primary state, hit plus here, click hover. Now we can make any changes we want to this button on hover, as long as it's a change to elements that exist in the default state. In other words, we cannot add new elements to this hover state, we can only alter existing ones. For the hover state, I'll change the opacity to 0.5. Now, if we hit Command P or Control P on a Windows machine and we hover our button, we can see that it works. We'll do the same thing for the pressed state, hover pressed and just click the plus and there you have your pressed state. Now just to illustrate this, I'll change the opacity to 0.25, hit play again. Now when we hover, you can see that it goes to 50% opacity and when we click it, it goes down to 25% opacity. Now variants in Framer surprisingly allow us to create different variants of our component. It could be anything from open and closed states in an accordion to device adapted versions of a component. So with my primary variant targeted, I'll go to the right side here and hit plus variant. In this variant, I don't want any text. So I'll just hide the text by hitting backspace. I want it to be equally high and wide. So I'll change the width and the height to be fixed and change the height to 56 so that it maps. We can even hit this so that it always stays equally high and wide. I'll give it some more radius so that it always stays round. Then I'll add the same hover state. So 50% opacity or 0.5 here in the sidebar. And for the press state, 0.25. We can now head out into the main canvas, go to assets, pick our component and drag it onto our desktop frame. Now with our component selected, you can see in the right sidebar here that we have the option to change between our variants. We can also change the text here, click me twice. However, in this case, I want to also be able to change the icon dynamically, which brings us to step four, adding variables. With variables, we can add dynamic controls to our components including things like show and hide toggles, color changes, image changes, etc. I'm gonna go back to our component and I'm gonna add the ability to change the icon and its color. I'll do this by targeting our icon, then go to the right sidebar. I'll go here to name where we can change the icons to different icons. I'll hit plus name and click create variable. I'll call this variable icon, hit enter, then I'll do the same for the color by hitting plus color, create variable, call it icon color. Now, if we jump back out to our main canvas, you can see that the right sidebar now has two additional fields, one drop down list for the icon and an icon color. Now with all of this done, it's time to create our card and our first nested component. I have this movie poster image that I'll wrap in a stack I'll go to the radius here and add some rounding to the stack. On top of this frame, I'm gonna create another frame. Gonna make sure that it's placed above the image. Gonna make sure that it's position absolute. Gonna center it. 
in the frame, make sure that it touches all the sides. Then I'm gonna change the fill here to a linear gradient, make the gradient dark, change the opacity in the top to 0%. I'm gonna call it overlay. And then on top of this frame, I'm gonna create a text field, call it title, change the color to white, make it medium, bump it up in text size, reposition it a bit, gonna make sure that it's pinned to the sides and the bottom. Now drag our button component into this same overlay. Reposition it a bit, make sure it's pinned to the sides. Now here comes the power of our variants, because now I'll go to variant here, change it to variant two, and with variant two, I'll go to icon, search for play, take play arrow, I'll change the color of the icon to be black, I'll take the whole icon, decrease the size to 32 pixels. Now I'll target the frame here. I'll right click, hit create component, call it movie card, hit enter. And now once inside of this component, I'll go to the layers here. Now I'll grab the title and the play button. I'll push them outside of the frame. I'm gonna grab this whole overlay, set it to 0% in opacity. Then I'm gonna zoom out a bit, click it again, click on the hover block below, click hover. Now on hover, I want the overlay to go back to one or 100% in opacity. And I want the items, the button and the title to move up into the frame. Now, if we play this and I hover it, you can see the magic happening. If I hover the play button, we still have the same hover state that we set on our button component. So what we have here now is a nested component, but we're not done. Now it's time for the finale, the carousel. So I'm gonna jump back out to our main canvas. I'll go to the main view, remove this for now. I'll go to insert, search for carousel, drag this inside here, make sure that it's pinned to the sides. I'm gonna take our movie card here. I'm gonna duplicate it four times so that we have five movie cards. I'm gonna go to each and every one of them, change the title, uh, Avengers End Game. Here, I'll start by changing the image here as well, and here, and finally here. I'll also go to each and every one and change the title, Rude Awakening. I'll just say Jumanji, Strays, and Super Mario. Now I'll head to the carousel component, Take these dots here and just connect them to every single one of these movie cards. I'll go to the height here and set it to fit content so that it doesn't clip the content. I'll move it up a bit. I'll go to the desktop, hit Command P to play. And there we go. Nested card components made into a Netflix style carousel. Now, if you want to learn more about how carousels work in Framer, check out this video here. Until the next one, have a great life.